Okay, hey now, here we are. This is uh, module 13, and like we had talked about, um, we're going to start to explore um, our GPU settings. So I'm just kind of going over here on the screen some of the things I've changed in between that last scene and this scene. Now, everything in the scene is the same, okay? So if we go ahead and kind of kick off a render here, this is with the GPU. So as you can see here at the top, we have that RGB uh, denoiser. And what it does is it, it gives you a, a preliminary image of what the scene is going to look like when it's fully rendered, or at least something pretty close. Now, it still takes a little time to render, but it allows you to develop better by getting a sense of how that scene is going to look. So let's get into this a little bit more. Um, with the GPU settings, um, like I had talked about previously, this is with the RTX, the two six, um, sorry, 2060, the GeForce um, GPU. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come up here to create, and I'm going to create a spotlight. Okay, and the spotlight is pretty powerful, and it only comes in the Maya lights, and that's why I'm in this menu instead of the Arnold menu. So if we look here, we want to come down here and just choose this spotlight, um, you know, node here for our light. Now spotlights can be tricky. Okay, when they come into the scene, they're very small, so we're going to have to scale them up a little bit. And I'll probably just do something like, um, let's see here, maybe 10. I think that's good enough. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and click on it, and then we can start to manipulate this a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and translate it up and kind of move it in between this sphere and this cube I want it in this area here. Now, one of the troubles with Spotlight is how do you know where it's pointing at? You know, where do you know the light is going to? And one way to do that is within our panels. We come up here to panels, okay? And if we select this look through selected, because our spotlight was highlighted green, that means it's selected in the scene. And now when we're looking through it, it's basically like, um, you know, a pair of binoculars almost. So we can just navigate like we normally do by holding down left click and alt and we can pan around okay and this actually aims the spotlight of you know where that light is going to be distributed to right in front of us kind of like a sight on a gun I hate to use that analogy but you know that that is kind of like what it is and I'm gonna aim it here at this cube alright and Next, I'm going to go back out of my look through and back into my perspective. So here we go. Now we're looking at the spotlight in third person almost, you know, outside of it. And we're, we're looking at where, it, where it's directed at. Now the arrow in front of the spotlight there is actually the direction arrow. That's showing how the light um, or which direction that light is being pointed. So it looks pretty good. And I think this is a good good place to start. So I'm going to open up my attribute editor, okay, and right now I have this uh, area light selected, all right, and I'm going to go ahead and just turn these down a little bit. I'm going to select them in the outliner and do this blue tone and about 0.5 on all of them. I think that's pretty good. The reason why I turned them down is that I want this spotlight to kind of show. Now, this cube here, you probably see this green cube here in the scene. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just delete that. It was used for another example. And I want to make sure that I have my spotlight selected, okay, so that way it populates the attribute editor. There's that cube too. Went ahead and deleted it, or I actually I just hit it, just hit Control H to hide it and you can bring it back with shift H. So now again we're in here in the spotlight and these settings if you haven't seen already they are much different from our Arnold settings okay 
And within this light, we can choose other lights. In other words, you can choose another node to connect to this attribute. But we're going to leave it a spotlight. We are going to change the color. I want it to be something like a hot red. It's kind of like a laser. And we'll take a look at some of these other settings in here. We have intensity, we have cone angle, we have penumbra angle, and a drop off. And then below this, we have some other settings set for like fog. So if we wanted this light to expel its own fog, we could create that as well. And there's some other settings. There's some decay properties on how that light will decay over a distance. But what I'm looking for is this Arnold tab down here. Okay. Now if we toggle this open, we start to see things that we have seen before. In other words, we have um, an exposure, we have samples, we have radius, we have this normalized checkbox. And we have some other settings below this. We have the roundness, we have the aspect, aspect ratio, and the lens radius. All of these will have to be adjusted in some way or another. And so there is a lot more to do with a spotlight. Okay, And I'm just going to kick off a render here with the default settings of our spotlight here. And if you're seeing what I'm kind of seeing and taking notes here, the light truly is not doing anything. In other words, we can't see it. It's not, you know, dissipating in our uh, atmosphere. That's because it is low exposure, low intensity. And we finished the render. It took about, it's like a little under a minute there, and still no, no laser. And what I did, I'm just selecting that um, uh, slide there so we can look at it later. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease this cone angle and I'm gonna make it pretty sharp I think I'll uh, you know it, it I want it pretty sharp pretty small and concise light so set it to about a seven all right and you can see how thin that looks okay so now when we kick off the render now all I did was just can you know make that that cone more concise and more constricted so we do get a, a slight sample now of this light just because it's more concentrated all right and again spotlights are going to be something you're going to have to kind of mess around with I'm going to lower my uh, area light here a little bit more I'm going to go to a point two. I think I'll do that on all of them that's a little better okay all right, so I'll kick off one more GPU rendering. We're starting to see it a little bit more just because there's no ambient light or not as much ambient light in our stage here. We're starting to see it a little bit more. So pretty much without setting any of the, uh, you know, intensity or exposure of our light, we're getting some, uh, some residual effect. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And now I'm going to come down here to Arnold, okay, and I'm going to look at my settings here. Now, the exposure that I have set for it is set at 4, okay. Yours may still be at 1, so it's okay, don't worry. I'm going to bump that up to like, um, I think I got it like right around 15. And I'll go ahead and... You know, knock that off. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Now we're starting to see this the the power of this particular um, spotlight. You know, and what it can do as it's cutting through our volumetric atmosphere. And I'll probably set it 10. I apologize. I thought it. Uh, so either or 10, 15. I'm sure it'll get the same effect. And that is with again the exposure. Let me go ahead and minimize this. And from here, let's see, what I want to try to attempt to do with this light and, you know, in our, in our uh, area light here, I'm just going to bring that down too as well. I'm going to actually just go ahead and, yeah, just make it something of that sort. What's a little better? less light the better on the ambient side we'd be able to see this and what I'm going to try and do is get the spotlight to actually transmit through this material as because it is glass 
and to shine on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the uh, GPU render here to see where my starting point is and if that exposure of 10 is strong enough to get through this glass here. Well, starting to see it, there's a, a hint of it through there, but not really that much at all. Still got considerable ambient light in the scene too as well. I'm going to stop that and I'm going to bump this exposure up again and let's see here let's try to get this to go through the surfaces um, I don't know maybe maybe like 25 that's pretty powerful but we'll take a quick image there and we'll hit the render off again whoa we're starting to get something now most definitely so with the spotlight if you notice the Arnold tab is doing most of the work okay the exposure that's set within our standard settings should be all at default and there's some other ways we again could increase this we could increase the samples would get a little bit better of a render um, we could actually adjust some of the aspect ratio along with our lens radius to give us a little bit more power from that spotlight. But these are things you're going to have to kind of experiment with because each scene is different. And these lights can either help it or they can hinder it. So make sure that you know kind of an idea of what you want you know, to kind of achieve. I think I'm going to try one more thing. I'll go ahead and take a quick thumbnail of that. And let's do this. Let's set this exposure something like really powerful, like 60. Sometimes this will blow out the scene and you'll just get like white. But let's see what we got here. Yeah, not too shabby. Starting to kind of come in and we're getting definitely more volume you know through the glass itself and that's kind of cool but we are starting to see a much heavier residual transmission coming through the other side so please take that into account again this is a glass material it is a transmissive material it is in our presets and we're going to start covering you know more of that in the next uh, few tutorials here we'll start talking about materials and their abilities and you know what their limitations are and and you know what their benefits are as well I'm going to minimize this and again you know it as you start to develop your scene okay you're gonna notice that if you don't need this volume or you want to change maybe the density of this white um, you want to increase that white vibrance you may have to go into your render settings and pop back into that node and go ahead and adjust that that color and I just made it a little bit more white just to see if it you know let the light transmit through it a little bit better now, I think it's about the same not, not too much of a difference if anything it, it increased our ambient light around us so that color ribbon within our volumetric here to the right, that, that bright white, um, you may not want that. You may want something more of a, of a nice gray. So, and we'll look at this more again as we, we, as we move forward and as we start to develop our side-by-side -side room because we do have that volumetric um, fog that's in it. So yeah, that's a little bit of a, uh, an example of a powerful GPU. Uh, rendering in the RGBA denoiser. So in the next couple of tutorials we're going to start to develop materials and lighting.